two equally thorny and contemporary issues, social media marketing and influencer strategies. We're aiming to work out which platforms are right for you and your business. I'm delighted to welcome onto the stage three people who certainly know what they're talking about. So please show your appreciation to Hannah Craig from PHA, Lisa French of Truth Creative, and from Connected3, Kenny Metham. Please make them very welcome. Right, I'm, I've got to say I'm excited about this. We had half an hour on uh, virtual on Teams a couple of weeks ago, and we all got on really, really well, which is where it all falls down today. And is yeah, it you're right? a good stage of our following now. So. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Have you been That's drinking yet? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Um, just very quickly, uh, tell everybody who you are in a sort of uh, funny, entertaining, charismatic way, Kenny. Oh, don't, don't open <laughs> that can kind of words. Hello, my name is Kenny. I am the Senior Influencer Marketing Manager at Connective3. So me and my little team deal with all things influencers, celebrity marketing. Um, we dabble in organic social as well, a little bit of everything. Brilliant, Hannah. Uh, hi, I'm Hannah, so I'm head of uh, PHA North. So the PHA group is a PR, digital and creative agency and kind of over the past 10 years I've been doing lots of kind of designing 360 kind of campaigns, uh, looking at you know all kind of con strategies for all different brands, businesses, shapes and sizes and thinking about what that could look like um, across kind of whether it's earned media, um, across social with influencers and said celebrity kind of ambassadors and looking at bringing that to life across all those different channels. Hannah also said she wasn't going to wear her stack shoes. That's why she's not sitting next to me because she may look, <laughs> look like a jockey. I um, am very tall. Lisa, tell us who you are. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Truth. I'm one of the co-owners of Truth Creative um, but my role is to head up and manage the PR team. So we do public relations in all its glory, traditional media relations, social media, influencer outreach, thought leadership, blah, 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 blah. Right, I want to start with you, Lisa, and, and Hannah, you can chip in as you like, and Kenny, I'll come to you in a moment. I, I, I hate chairs being like this. And then, it, oh, it, it, kind of, it, kind of, it kind of suits our panel, I think, because yeah. we are kind of organic like that. Um, how annoying is it that everyone thinks they knows about know. social media, Lisa? That's my bugbear. Um, yeah, it's, it's an issue because um, everyone's on, well, the majority of people are on social media, right? So everyone has a view of it based on their own experiences. Um, so unlike other services where people are less familiar, when I'm going to talk to clients about it for the first time, it can be challenging because they think they know everything and quite often they don't because you know there's nuances to it and uh, it depends who you are and what you're doing and what platforms are right for you but yeah it's it's a bit of a for me I, yeah. I guess Hannah I'm, I'm someone that's the problem I think I've got social media all sorts of because I'm purely on LinkedIn I can't stand social media actually but that, <laughs> but um but I, but I, 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 yeah exactly I, I'm, I'm being very brave um, but yeah, I'm either problem because I think, right, I've got it all worked out and, 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 it, and it's absolutely fine and, 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 and you're just going to help me expand my knowledge if I'm coming to you as a client. Yeah, I think some people underestimate the amount of kind of time, effort, thinking that needs to go into a, a good social media strategy. You know, it's not just a case of, oh, taking pictures here, there, and everyone will put it up or time things. Like, you know, there's whole teams behind feeds who are carefully kind of curating that content, making sure they've got the right content themes. You know, if it's a brand or a product, making sure that there's a relevant tone of voice, um, you know, working out what your objectives are. Is it that you're trying to build a community? Is it that you're using it to sell products? You know, what does that feel like? Or is it a convergence of the two? And I think, as I say, I think people can really underestimate kind of the time and effort that takes. And I think, I don't know. Even just writing a post. Yeah. People think, well, that'll take two minutes. And it really doesn't, because actually, you're quite often saying a lot in like, well, what's Twitter now? 280 characters. Sorry, X. <laughs> Get, get uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, so you've got to condense a lot of information into a very, mm. very few words, and it's got to be punchy, and it's got to be the interesting, tone, yeah. it's got to be engaging, it's got to be on brand for the client, it can't be too, too sales led. So one post can take a while. Kenny, you're nodding, they're being very polite. I'm expecting you to be less polite when I ask you the next question. <laughs> okay. Is this kind of generational? How, how patient yes. do you have to be with older <laughs> people who don't understand social media and what it can do? Yeah, so the whole adage of the. Um, just because you run your own socials doesn't, doesn't mean you can run a brand. Kind of disagree, I'm not going to lie to you. Simply because... Oh, oh. It wasn't me, sorry guys. <laughs> um, simply because that I created my first social media account at the age of 13. So, what, we're 11 years deep now, and I've watched these things Did change. your parents know? <laughs> Something about that. Um, uh, I've watched it change and develop and grow and evolve. So, when I sort of entered into 
the social media world professionally, a lot of the things that people were still figuring out, I was like, oh, I did that five years ago. Like, so I had this, this ingrained knowledge. Yeah, you've got to switch your mindset, but that training period, which in regular jobs, most other jobs, takes you, what, one to two years to catch up and sort of get the vibes. I was, I was ready to go. <laughs> is, is there also a problem in people understanding the value of it and maybe catching oh, up too late? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate sales funnels and talking about them, but the sales funnel is being forever squished and this top of the funnel stuff is being completely ignored, which, for example, in my industry, organic social influence and marketing, the majority of it is top of the funnel. Mm -hmm. But when you squish it down, it all becomes acquisition-based. You, One, we've talked about it sort of today already. You lose your brand salience. You lose your brand value a little bit. But also, it kind of loses the essence of social, and it becomes this sales machine, which that's not what it was ever built for. It is social media. There's the social bit in there. Am I right thinking it, the, the, the key question that you get asked by your clients, probably people, that, again, who don't understand the resonance, perhaps, of social media is, fix my social media, but do it cheaply. Oh, yeah. Is, 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 that, is that kind of what you're being asked to do and, and, and squaring a, an impossible circle? Yeah, it's like Hannah said before. It's the time that goes into the strategy behind it, but then the execution of it. And also, community management, if you are... Um, responsible for maintaining and monitoring a client's social channels. Like it's an, it's an always-on job, pretty much. So, but people are unwilling to pay for the amount of time it takes. But and, and you know, obviously the expertise as well. Yeah, and I do think I think you know there are efficiencies. Obviously, you can make. There's plenty of tools, and you know, we're mm. talking about AI and things like that like coming up that you can build into kind of that ways of working to help make it more efficient, but still always going to need that human touch and that human sense check at the minute. But I guess the thing that is evolving, and perhaps, again, it's not understood across the industry, is when people say, fix my social media, they, they assume all platforms are relevant to them. Yeah, exactly. And there's some, you know, as if you're kind of, you know, depending on what, again, your objectives are going right to the start, you know, if you're a kind of a, a brand or a product, you might not, you know, do you, you might not need to be on some of those channels. So therefore, you know, are you just? Some people, I think, tend to think I need to be on every single social channel because you know that's what's out there. But actually, when you come to think about designing a strategy, it's like, is that channel the right fit for me? Is the audience that I'm trying to speak to kind of mm -hmm. on there? Can I generate the right kind of content um, that that needs to be kind of on those platforms? Uh, and yeah, you know, can I? You know, can you kind of do that to a, a good standard and, and, and make it effective and be impactful? Yeah. One, one thing we didn't talk about was the kind of Twitter X thing when we, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago. Has Elon Musk sort of softly killed Twitter by d doing that? Or, or is, is he growing it? Well, he's, it, there's no, he's now said he's going to charge, isn't he? He's going to um, make all users of X, formerly Twitter, um, so pay a subscription to be on there. So, and I think it'll be minimal. He hasn't actually said you know, what those fees will be. But that's, that totally changes the landscape. Um, his reason for doing it is to avoid bots, because he said that you know, you work, it's so easy to set up. You can do those in, in seconds, and this will stop. You know, it'll make the platform more genuine and whatever. But it will change the game for social media. And I wonder whether any other platforms will end up going down that road. Yeah, you were shaking your head, Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's doing it as a little bit of a publicity stunt. We've talked a lot about PR today, and I think he is using Twitter X to fuel his other businesses and the publicity behind that and make sure he's up there in search rankings and things like that. I think he's taken it and he's sort of manipulating it. I think in like 20 years' time, they'll be studying it in schools and being like, look, look what he actually did in the end. Mm. But right mm. now, it looks on the surface like a vanity project, but and I'm, not, I, I'm not a fan of him, but at the same time, he's a very clever man, and I think... I think his his desires will be seen in the next two to three years. But oh, what's the growth market? Is, is, is it TikToks? It appears to be. We've just seen a couple of instances. Is it Instagram? Video. Ex explain video. how everything works and where where things are moving. Yeah, video pre predominantly. So TikTok, yes, but I mean it's it's a, still a very young demographic on TikTok at the moment. So depending on what brand you and who your audience are, it could be completely irrelevant. Um, one of my clients is a building society and they said to me, we need to get on TikTok. And I was like, their demographic are, are mature savers. And I said, why do you need to be on TikTok? Oh, we've seen other companies doing those dances. I'm like, well, okay, no, let's not, let's not do that. But they're now looking at an apprentice scheme and, and an internal recruitment campaign. And I said to them, okay, now's the time to think about TikTok. So yeah, it's, what TikTok and what Instagram's now doing is, is showing the power of video, and that's not going to go away. That's only going to yeah. advance some one way or another. Yeah. And I think we talked a little bit when we kind of caught up previously about kind of 
people's wants from different kinds of content now. And I think the one thing that TikTok has done is really changed uh, the kind of content kind of desires and things. You know, mm. I think Instagram kind of went through that phase and went kind of higher up into that aspirational lifestyle and showing people, you know, what life could be like. And it you know, may be verging on, well, definitely verging on bakery. Whereas uh, TikTok kind of came along uh, kind of in the pandemic when it, that's when it really kind of blew up, when everybody was having a hard time. It was rough and it's just fun, easy, good content that people want to watch, that they enjoy watching, that they get some you know, kind of emotion out versus this kind of aspirational lifestyle that, you know, we're never going to all reach. Um, so I think it, the different channels serve their different purposes, but they all influence each other because now we've seen Instagram introducing those, you know, formats that are coming a lot more prevalent like real and people kind of changing the kind of content that they're wanting to put out on Instagram more regularly as well now as well. And threads. Mm, Instagram exactly. threads, trying yes. to be Twitter. Yeah. X. It's a weird one. I think I would say TikTok has changed the trajectory of my career. When it first sort of started, it was very much that how can we build a lifestyle that people aspire to? It was very sort of hippy dippy, like how, how beautiful can we make a single image and how creative can we go? And then TikTok arrived mm. and it was like, get all that let's put that to the side mm. they want real people people connect with people people buy from people tiktok then also introduced loads more statistics so my little creative brain was like okay now i've got to do maths every day <laughs> um and so yeah it's, it's absolutely changed it for the for the better we'll see but i mean it's made my life harder i don't know about you two yeah. <laughs> it's made it more fun yeah, yeah. Some i enjoy i enjoy yeah. watching it for sure, yeah. But it, it is, is the uh, onus now on you to create something that's real? Uh, yeah. and, but, but maybe isn't real? I don't, I don't know. It really depends which platform you're on, though, doesn't it? Yeah. So real, yes, on TikTok, not, not necessarily on Instagram. That's still got quite a high aesthetic. It's quite still an aspirational place. So you're not going to get the same reality on there yet anyway um, that you do get on TikTok and, and like likewise LinkedIn you know that's that's still totally different behind the scenes what we call behind the scenes content that works well on TikTok actually from a, on a corporate level does work really well on LinkedIn because of the whole people buying people but not but it, you still have to be mindful of you know who's seeing this and be careful about what you how how real you are being. Uh, well, we talked uh, a lot about kind of organic campaigns <coughs> as against kind of paid campaigns. Uh, and, I, and I guess a lot of people come to you and say, all right, I've got this budget to do it, make it work for me. Whereas the reality is that people talking about it and, uh, and connecting about things is probably even better than people paying for it. Is that, is that how it works or is that just my kind of nascent mind trying to work it all out? Yeah, I think, again, it depends on what your objectives are. If you're kind of going on social because you just want to get eyeballs, then, you know, yeah, paid is great. And we were having this debate, weren't we, a few weeks ago about some of the platforms now being a pay-to-play space. Mm. So a lot of kind of meta, so Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, they expect brands and company accounts to spend on there. And if you're not spending, they will limit, you know, organically what you can achieve. So really, it, you know, we kind of try and build paid into those strategies because mm. otherwise you're never going to get what you want to be organically because it's very difficult now to build that on there. Whereas previously you could go down, yeah, and you still can go down the community route and kind of building a community that people want to be a part of and join, mm. but you still have to reach those people to bring them into your community. So there's kind of that, as I say, including paid into those elements, whereas TikTok is still very young. And I think you can still, you, well, you can still drive high views, high community, mm. you know, um, with the right kind of content organically. Do you still have the, because I have this, um, I get asked a lot about, well, we'll just do paid social. We don't need to worry about the organic because all these platforms are paid to play. And they, and that, and you're absolutely right. They are because, you know, but if very few people can see your organic content, but there's still absolutely a place for organic content, oh, isn't there? Exactly, because the point is, if you get in front of people and they come over to your page and there's nothing, and there's there, nothing like there, like you've lost them. Yeah. So it's yeah. your, di it's your digital portfolio, together. isn't it? It's your digital portfolio. Yeah. You need them to, they're not always going to go to your website, they're not always going to go to Google. Mm -hmm. I think it's something like, well, going back to Gen Z, but like 40% of Gen Zers use social to search first. Yeah. So they'll go to TikTok and be like, mm. restaurants near me and TikTok in learning this specifically and then Instagram as well where it's like, okay, social SEO, there's ranking factors on your organic content. There's now sort of, you can do like near me things. There's, there's so much coming together where mm. social and search are intertwining. 
and it's going to make our jobs a lot more yeah. fun, fun and hard. It was funny, on the, on the other panel, we had somebody sat here saying that this could be frightening, and someone sat over there, Mitchell, I think it was, who said it's exciting. Are you, are you, are you, the way your eyes are, you're all in the exciting camp rather than the, the frightening camp. Yeah. For sure, yeah. I yeah. think For sure. So. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Just change. <laughs> I think it's just like changing consumer behavior, isn't it? Like we've we've always evolved. The way that we use social has evolved so much in kind of the past, what, 10 to 20 years, as you know, since when Facebook blew up and came about mm. versus where we are now. So it's always going to evolve. It's not going to yeah, stay the same. Yeah, you've got to embrace it. Otherwise, we've not, we're out of a job, really. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and where is Facebook right now? I'm only asking you because I get really annoyed because I... My, my sister-in-law is obsessed with it, and I, and I go nowhere near it, and I think that says more about her than it's it does probably, me. But... It's, it's hanging on, isn't it, by its fingernails to its original yeah. purpose of being like a community-led pa platform. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's not Karen's called Karen, in the Sharon. but I'm just trying to, yeah. yeah. My mum's called Karen. She absolutely hates the Karen <laughs> thing. Yeah. Is, she, is she on yeah. Facebook, though? My poor mum. She, she is, She yeah. is on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. so there she we is are. a Karen on Facebook. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's clinging on to that, and I think it... it it's it's a bit old school really now i think facebook does community really well that's why yeah. right because yeah. i think the local groups and things no yeah. other platform has cottoned on to how to do that yet so in your local area now we've all got a facebook group that mm. some of us joined just for the lols to see what the karens of this world are posting <laughs> but you know i think they've really they've they've developed that niche and they're hanging on to it i think sure. versus and all it, the other platforms and it's actually a good way around facebook's algorithm the community groups if you could infiltrate them on a brand level you're on for a winner, you're on yeah. to a winner. Yeah, there we are one of the there secrets is they take that away infiltrate those community <laughs> brands and, and you're but on to a winner though. it's, it's very, very hard, hard as a business to, yeah. to do that yeah time consuming which links back to the whole people expect a hundred thousand followers in three weeks and you're like <laughs> Give me, give me three years. Yeah. Let me build your brand first. Let me build your content base. Let's get some attention. Let's sort of look at the press element as well. And that's how you build it. It's not a sort of click your fingers, mm. we're done, ready to go. It's funny, earlier there was a chart over there that talked about the public's trust in people. I'm delighted to say that mm. journalists weren't bottom and that government officials were. And I can say that now Sherelle's not here um, and not make her feel bad about it. Um, if, if it had been real true in terms of a graph, it would have influences even further down the line, yeah, so wouldn't it? So, 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 so how has that market changed? Because, you know, I think if I ask people with their hands up, who hates influencers? Okay, it's less than I thought. Not maybe maybe there's yeah. influencers in the room, but I, I hate influencers, but maybe I'm not understanding it properly. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think you're not understanding it properly. Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're trying to do. Wait, wait, hold back. <laughs> so I think it was like on social, I've got these stats in my head, 38% because I throw them out all the time, 38% of people look at branded content and trust it. They go, okay, I trust that. But I think it's from like 68% of people look at influencer con content and trust it. Um, influencer marketing is perceived as a brand new industry. It is absolutely not. It's just changed shape a hell of a lot. So my one sort of leverage point is always in the 1700s, Denby who make like pots and things, they use the royal family as like on there, that was the first sort of way of influence marketing. And it sold more things because they used someone who the public liked and knew, put their face on it, and everyone went out and bought it. And that sort of, it's evolved over these years to now it's real people with a mobile phone on TikTok talking to you. And it, it, although it's very different, it kind of, kind of is the same. Mm -hmm. I am looking forward to using that analogy in future, I have yeah. to say, I will, Robert. It is, it is a good one, you sell that really well. Thank you. Yeah. And you were revising clearly with all your stats before this. <laughs> but but tell, me, tell me how your job has changed in terms of influences over the last sort of two or three years that you've been involved professionally. I know Absolutely. you were, yeah, you were yeah. involved before that while you were a student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is the influence that, uh, that walked into the room a different person to the one that walked into the room three years Absolutely. ago? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we did a, we're doing a campaign at the minute for Avon, so we're launching this new fragrance and the reason why they really wanted to sort of work with influencers and work on social is because on TikTok, my, my favorite analogy is this lovely lady called Therese. She's in her mid 50s. She one day woke up, um, it was in lockdown. And she was like, I want to try comedy. So she started posting these funny TikToks. And since then there's grown an audience of like 620,000. If you were to tell me five years ago that Therese from Somerset in her mid 50s was going to be one of like the most influential influencers within her age group within that category, you kind of wouldn't believe it. But her content is no, it doesn't have the polish. It's super hyper organic, I call it. It's sort of like she's propping it up mm. on the microwave and she is just talking. And people <laughs> love it. And she yeah. gets so many views. And it's just, 
It's really cool to see mm. because it, it's humanized it a hell of a lot more, which also leads me into the, I'll let you talk in a minute. It also leads <laughs> me into the, into the, thank you. 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 Thank the world of celebrity marketing kind of like dwindling yeah, up. Yeah, because you have a situation where the cart was pulling the horse at, uh, at one yeah, stage, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. where, the, where the, your power in an industry w was was kind of being eroded away because of celebrities. Is that, is that, is that fair to say? I think um, what we're kind of seeing now is, again, like how each platform has its own kind of like strategy, so do these kind of tactics. So, you know, if you are wanting kind of PR and you're wanting kind of that coverage or online coverage, it's, then Celebrity does a great job of that, right? Because you're going to be able to place That's interviews, audience. you've got stories and things that you can sell. Whereas when it comes to kind of different, as I say, different objectives on different channels, there's also lots of different tiers and different types of influencers now, right? Mm. So, um, you know, we've all, you know, been aware of like the rise of micro influencers, nano influencers, and the power that they have exactly as Kenny's saying, because they're like you and me. We look at them on our social channels mm. and we think, yes, we trust you. Yes, we buy into you because you live around the corner from me. So, um, you know, I feel like you're on the same wavelength. And I understand kind of what you're saying. And then you've got kind of the bigger guys who are known, again, across different sectors. So you've got big lifestyling influencers, you've got big gaming mm. influencers, you've got big cleaning influencers. You know, everybody's got their own niche and their own kind of subsection. So it's about, you know, using that and creating those strategies and finding the right people that are going to tell the right message for you. But I think we had a chat, didn't we, about the celebrity thing, and we were saying, and I don't know about anybody else in the room with experience, but celebrities are not influencers. Yes, they influence, but when you try and ask them to do pieces of content, which from my experience is diabolical. Because and it costs a fortune. And it costs so <laughs> much money. Because yeah. they're, not, they're not digital content creators, so they don't know how to get those messages across in the right mm. way as the, you know, the, the digital content creators who've grown up in that world do. So it's quite hard. You have to manage client expectations quite a lot on that in terms of brand and, and those kind of deliverables from that. So people are like, well, that celebrity's got 2 million followers, so we definitely want to use that and use their social feeds, which is, yes, absolutely, we should be using them, but don't ask them to create the content. <laughs> is that right? You just steer oh, them in the right direction and say, read, yeah. read this card and make it look nice. <laughs> or do a shoot day with them and manage yeah, it. Video. Yeah, video. Well, that, that's, when it, that's when you sort of have to look at your ROIs, which I hate talking about, but you do, because you can have mm. a suite of influencers who create incredible content, or you can spend 30 grand and have a, yeah. a 10 grand rider for one celebrity for one shoot day. And it's sort of like the celebrity uh, marketing world has, has a lot of changes come in. And I think although prices are still going up, I think eventually they'll go down mm -hmm. because the demand will drop off and drop off and drop off because influencers can do it better, quite a lot cheaper and in a more authentic way. Which yeah, and their audience are more engaged. Exactly, so, yeah, you know, you know we're all, we all follow celebrities, I'm sure whether we read about them or they're on social and we might say oh yeah okay but how much are we going oh yeah and uh, that's me and i mm. want that we're not really would you because they're they're just they're over there and they're not the relatable yeah. so the micro on the nano influ influencers which is just jargon for the, those with a smaller following generally have a far higher engagement which means when they're posting something they're fol more of their following a higher percentage of the following are liking it or sharing it with their followers or responding to it in some way. So where's it going to go in the next five years? What are you sort of saying to your clients in terms of a little bit of future proofing? Um, I think the actual term influencer will change and peter out. I think a new term, I don't know what that will be, will come in that... Kenny's, Kenny's friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Creator. Uh, yeah, I think, you hear that yeah, a lot, don't you? you? Creator. Creators. Um, but I think we need a new term because there's a preconceived idea of influencers already, even though they've only been around for like eight years, ten years, in this in this sort of iteration. Um, I think we need a new word. If anyone's got any think, suggestions, please. And tell I think me that's me. where your hatred towards influencers yeah. comes because you think of them as I these hope, people yeah. that like da da da. <laughs> They're always in Dubai as well. They're always testing. in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. What well, is that, about Dubai? That is a very stereotypical thing. <laughs> <type. laughs> actually, when you see the amount of work and effort that they do behind the scenes to get the content mm. right, to be able to bring the key messages across, like it's a real skill. Like, and I have a lot of respect for the people that like kind of do it and do it well. Have you all sat in a room with a celebrity who isn't delivering and thinking at the end of that day, blimey, we've got nothing there? Yeah. 
or having to pivot on the day to be like, okay, shall we try something else? Because you kind of is think it, this is not going to like deliver on what we need. So, so what do you do? Do you, do you in future say, right, that we, we go with the nanos, we go with the people that are going to yeah. give us something organic, something real? Yeah, yeah. or flip oh. the objectives with a celebrity to be like, yeah. oh, we're going to use this day. You, yeah, use else. it in a different way. Quite yeah. often we filmed for social content and it's not worked out, so we've used it for press outreach instead mm. or on on a website for example instead of you know because we know it's just not going to land mm -hmm. with a social following yeah. yeah yeah i agree when i was like eight i think it was like 18 i was like just doing like tea and coffee runs on this like christmas advert set i'm not going to say who it was say but who it was no <laughs> um essentially yeah the, the the person that was meant to be like doing it was meant to be the one that's hosting it um, just really, and it's also maybe too much pressure. Maybe they wasn't feeling it on the day. But when you're sat there in a room full of lots of people, and like, okay, we've spent a hundred thousand yeah. pounds on this person to rock up here today Good and stuff. to use their images um, and, and, and rights, and they're just sort of like very unenthused, not engaged. It was it was a very awkward situation. Um, and then you saw the final product, and there was only in it for like ten seconds. But it's, a, it's hey. very. That was a clue. <laughs> so just a, a final question for the people who, who are specialists in social media where do you go to for your social media where do you first feel most comfortable in, as a platform i know you've got lots of followers on insta oh, right, James. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> only, only forty thousand. it's probably gone up since that yeah mate about, Go on, do it, uh, give us your hand no, okay. yeah. um, I, I mean that's my comfort zone that's where i like creating content for that's what i enjoy um, I'm, I try TikTok, it's still not in my wheelhouse. I can do it from like a professional standpoint, but personally what I do, it, it's not my vibe yet. Thank God I'm not doing it as like a full-time business because I couldn't ignore it. I wouldn't be able to ignore it. But um, yeah, Instagram's my, my happy, happy little safe space. And, and Hannah, are you someone who, 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 because they do it professionally, steers clear of it socially or do you? I'm, I'm on the platforms and, you know, doing posts here and there, but I don't have, like, my own strategy or anything like that. And yeah. I think when you do do it professionally, you're kind of a bit like, oh, Yes, I can't exactly. Have the That's my to, issue. Like, I'm like, oh, I really feel like I need to post something. But I and do. You just, it just, yeah. You're just like, it's just going to take me so long and I can't be bothered. And so I'm very... I, like, I do love being on the platforms because they're a very easy and accessible way for me to keep up to speed with things and kind of what's going on, trends, and kind yeah. of seeing what other people are up to or clients that I've got, their competitors, what are they doing and kind of monitoring them. And I find it, it's a really good uh, place of inspiration for me. Mm. Um, kind of when I'm working on campaign ideas or creatives or thinking about influencer campaigns, having a good dig in and a good kind exactly, of Instagram, yeah, yeah. TikTok hole for a mm. while and see kind of what kind of content is resonating, who's talking about what in those kind of different worlds to help kind of inspire some maybe creative thinking for mm. campaigns I'm working on. Mm. Fantastic, thank you. What we wanted to do with this was kind of make it a chat between ourselves that you were kind of looking in on. Hopefully that worked as a strategy. Um, if it didn't, I've had a great time, so I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite selfish about it. I've learned so much from these three. I've enjoyed spending time with them, and, and I would like to go forward and, and stay in contact, yeah. not through social media, but we'll yeah. find another way of doing it. Um, but it has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you ever so much. Please show your appreciation to <laughs> Kenny, to Hannah, to, to Lisa.